Well, hello there, YouTube. I have a funny feeling that this uh, GoPro is pointing down too far. In fact, I'm almost certain of it. You're probably staring at the dash. You can't even see where I'm going. I may have to may have to alter some things here. But anyway, um, taking one of my favorite back roads home. This is a new mount. Uh, using old parts, you know, or GoPro parts I already had, but I, I mounted it differently on my helmet. It's a much cleaner uh, mount, way cleaner. But uh, to clear my shield, I uh, I thought I was good to go, you know, kind of lining things up. thought I was good to go where I had it, but uh, I have it sitting in a position that uh, the shield just opens. So basically I open it to that like second click up right where it clears the back of the GoPro and then I uh, I cinch the GoPro down at that point um, any higher and it, it'll hit and if that GoPro <laughs> keeps my shield from coming up I'm liable to have a panic attack get claustrophobic in these damn helmets especially if it's a hot day or whatever and I'm not going to loosen the GoPro back and forth just to open my helmet that that would be ridiculous but uh i don't know i don't know where it's at i uh, i never hooked it up to an app and, and paid attention to where it was at so i have no earthly idea i did do a microphone test with it and uh at that point i thought it was uh it was facing too far down so we'll see so anyway a uh, little story today Let's talk about May 18th, 1980. Now that may just be any other day other than the fact of, of it being just shy of 34 years ago. Well, if you live up here in the Pacific Northwest, that was quite a significant day. That was the day that Mount St. Helens blew up. It, on Sunday, May 18th, at 8.32 and 32 seconds to be exact. Um, that morning, a friend of mine, a high school buddy, and I decided to uh, to go riding out at Mount Solo. It's this place out Ocean Beach Highway or Highway 4 if you want to look at it on a map. It's a... Uh, it's the Washington side of going down the Columbia River to head for the ocean. But anyway, it's uh, it's you're still basically in town in Longview, and from there it's uh, 20. God, what was it? 24 or 26 miles as a as a crow flies. Every once in a while, that sign catches me, and I and I think there's a car here. Because I, you know, I, I cut that lane, so you want to make sure. God, look how green them fields are. Is that beautiful or what? You know, it's funny, all the stuff on the road, it almost has uh, the look of being fall out here. Um, but anyway, we decided to get up early that morning. I don't know why we were up and going that early. I think we, I think we liked doing that because it was like, I don't know, adventurous. We wanted to make the most of our day or whatever the case may be. But uh, anyway, uh, I had, uh, I'd had my license. I think I think he either just got his license or he was coming up on getting his license. And because uh, it almost seems like because we used to go, we used to take uh, back roads through our neighborhoods coming off uh, Columbia Heights mountains over there, where my parents lived and his parents lived. And um, we take back roads down and then take the railroad tracks that ran along behind a bunch of businesses and stuff. They're still there. And uh, we'd cross over, you know, any major highway he'd walk across. And I'm pretty sure we took the back roads that day. And I think that was one of the reasons we left early because, you know, on a Sunday morning, we figured there'd be no police around. And, well, whatever the case may be. We ended up at Mount Solo. 
and uh, there was a big riding area. There's a highway that divided the mountain. They actually cut a big V and made a road go through this mountain. And uh, it was the main route out to a warehouse or a Reynolds Aluminum. Well, uh, the mountain was divided obviously in two pieces. The one side was all kinds of little hills and this huge open area with all these big rocks and we used to, you know, do trials, trials bike type stuff out there and honing our skills, you know, as you are with a kid, you, you'll try anything, but anyway, really cool riding area, you could, you could spend a whole day there and the thing, shit, it was probably 10 acres big on that one side, ah, maybe more than that. <coughs> but some crazy hill climbs there too. Some really challenging ones at that. But, uh, excuse me. <clears throat> we ended up going on the other side, which was pretty much one trail that went up and it came up to a head where the V was cut in for the highway to go through. And at the top of that was kind of a, a rocky, like, plateau. The trail was big enough, you know, a Jeep or something could, could make it up there. Here's where I taking the pictures of the mountain the other day but um we decided to drive up that side first and uh so we uh, there was a, a bear cave that was up there too everybody called it the bear cave but it was a, a cave that was you know a small kid could crawl in it you'd never get me to go down it shit claustrophobic as i am are you kidding me but uh so we go up to the top of that trail, and we'd been goofing off a little bit, so we, we just stopped and and uh, took a break. So we are heading, or we are facing um, north and south. And going uh, south, you came to the, you know, the drop-off where the, where the road was, where the mountain was cut for the road to go through. I turned around, and I was facing north. So we had our, his bike is facing this way and I'm facing this way. And we got our side stands down. Well, it's rocky ground. You can, you know, the bikes aren't gonna sink in the ground. So we stop and we're shooting the shit. And uh, you know how you kind of lean on your bike and you kind of set your butt up on there and you have a foot on the, on the left foot peg. You know, you're basically sitting on your bike while it's sitting on the side stand. And uh, right there or a uh, colt um so we're sitting there I, I have no idea what we're what the conversation was even about but there was rumors that this you know this thing could go off at any time well longview itself is about on an average about 25 feet above sea level and longview used to be the riverbed the Cowlitz river used to spill over into the columbia through there you know, over time, you know, it etched its way into the ground and became lower, and the city became this perfectly flat um, place that they put a town in, logging town. And uh, so the rumors were that when this thing goes, you know, uh, a lahar could come down the uh, north and or south fork of the Toodle River, and if one came down the north fork, it would push into the Cowlitz. It would it would basically be like a, a tsunami in a river kind of a thing. And the whole town would flood, you know, it, we could be, you know, 10 feet underwater. And I mean, all these rumors were going, well, we both live way up on the Columbia Heights. I mean, we're, I don't know what the hell that, 15 to 1800 feet, whatever the hell it was up there. We always got, always got tons of snow up there. It'd be raining downtown and pouring down snow at our house. But, uh, so all these rumors, and I mean, these, if you look at any of the news reels, if you can find any of that stuff where they're talking about, you know, what could happen and you know, all this stuff in the paper every night and on the news. And, I mean, when this mountain went off, I mean, it had, God, yeah, speaking of invisible mountains, there's, I can see the top of it right there. And I don't have a camera to take a picture of it right across that field. It, it, well, to me, as you know, you're not going to see it. But, um, so anyway.
anyway, we were all scared to death for this thing, you know, just kind of waiting and waiting. And, you know, they had that, uh, the red zone. It was a 10 mile an hour barrier around the mountain that no one could, could enter. You know, we used to ride our motorcycles up there all, all the time up to the red zone. And, uh, you know, watch all the rangers and the people screaming because they got houses up there and everything else that they want to get in, you know. And uh, old man Truman, he's up there at his lodge. He's literally the only human being inside the 10 mile an hour or a 10 mile red zone. So, anyway, there's a lot of fear involved with this thing of what's going to happen when this thing goes. You know, nobody knew for sure it was going to go. They were basically saying it's pretty much imminent. It's going to happen. But, uh, and then that north side just kept bulging and bulging and bulging. So uh, the reason I'm telling you this is there's a lot of fear involved with, with this whole thing. And uh, so we're up there. And we happen to be sitting there on Sunday, May 18th at 8.32 and 32 seconds. And we we're both leaning, shooting the shit. And all of a sudden, both of us at the same time, which we didn't realize this until, you know, after the fact. We're kind of, you know, going over where we were, what we were doing. Um, at the same time, we both thought, poof, our, our side stands, side stands sunk in the mud. Well, you know, there is mud there, but it's like this kind of a slate rocky kind of thing. I mean, your, your side stand is not going to sink in it. And uh, then we both, like, jump off our bikes and kind of looking around and looking, and the bike is just sitting there perfectly fine. And we're like, uh, what the hell? You know, so he, he's looking at his, and I'm looking at mine, and we kind of looking at each other going, what the hell? We both thought our side stand sunk in. Well, all of a sudden, his eyes just, like, bug out of his head, and his mouth gapes open, and he can't even say anything. And I'm like, what the hell are you doing? And I, I turn around to see, but it kind of... I don't know what was going faster, it going sideways with us looking at it. We were basically dead east of it, or west of it, I'm sorry, looking east. And, you know, and it's flowing north. And uh, it's just this, like, boom, you know. It, and it was so huge and so surreal and so mammoth. I, I just... You know, I literally don't have the vocabulary to explain what I seen. It was epic, to say the least. Unbelievable. And we both just kind of stood there for a few seconds and, and just, you know, we can't even say anything. You're just like in shock. You can't believe what you're witnessing. And then, you know, it just kind of kept flowing like across the ground, it seemed like, north. And, but then it just started going up really high and just bulging really high up. And it's just these, like, rolling, boom, boom. It's like an atomic bomb rolling up. And it just was getting bigger and huger. And, and uh, we're like, oh, my God, the thing went off. So we're, like, freaking out all of a sudden. We're thinking, we got to get across town to hit one of the roads to get up Columbia Heights. You know, we're thinking, here comes this wall. You no, know, really, I mean, even if there was, it would, you know, it'd probably take hours for it to snake its way down. But, you know, you're a young guy. You don't know what the hell's going on. You know, I'm thinking the wall of water's coming, you know. <clears throat> and, you know, it was a lahar, so it's, you know, mostly mud and trees and houses and trucks and whatever the hell else it picks up as it's coming down. So we hauled ass. I mean, we ran lights. There's, you could tell people had no idea that the mountain had just gone off. But the funny thing is, is it didn't make a sound to us. But the blast of it could be heard all the way to Canada. But the sound wave, you know, went north of our position. We didn't hear the sound, but, but what had happened, the reason we thought our side stands is it just violently shook the ground when it went off. And um, I forget what the earthquake was, what the magnitude was, but anyway, um, then we hauled ass and we come down the, the heat, you know, went straight to his parents' house and I turned off and made it up to my mom's house and I'm coming down the hill and my mom's standing out in the front yard just absolutely hysterical because we used to drive up to the red zone all the time. 
and uh, she realized we had left and thought, sure as hell, we were up there at the mountain and we were goners. And uh, she'd hear any kind of engine sound and thought, would run outside to see if it was me on the motorcycle and finally it was. But yeah, that was a crazy, crazy, crazy day. And it's starting to rain on me. So uh, anyway, I'm close to the house here. That's my little Mount St. Helens story. So thanks for watching. You guys have a great day now. Take care.